What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Trey Hope here, as always. You can call me Trey Codes. And today, I wanted to discuss a command line tool that might be of benefit for you dealing with some of the assets in your Flutter app. That command line tool is called Spider. Now, what this does is it creates references of the assets in your assets folder. So if you have images, sounds, PDFs, whatever, Spider automatically creates these references for you on the fly. So it saves you time, erases some of that boilerplate code, I guess you could say, and allows you to jump back into the development part, which you should be focusing on anyways. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Also, a major shout out to the creator of this awesome project. His name is Berju Vachani. And my apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name, but he actually created this command line tool. So I'll drop a link to his buy me a coffee so you can support him that way. And also just be sure to try out the command line tool yourself after this video and, you know, let him know what you think. All right. So I have an empty Flutter project right now. Very basic. I'm just going to go over uh, three files just to show you that I pretty much have nothing in here right now. We're going to build all of this from scratch. Uh, but essentially, we're going to be generating these assets using Spider, and then I'll be demonstrating how to pretty much incorporate them into your Flutter app. So right now I have the pubspec.yaml file, pretty much the bread and butter of any Flutter app. There's not too much different here or anything that really that stands out, but one of the packages that we will be using is this assets audio player. And that's because uh, I'm going to be using it to actually play some of the audio files that we're using Spider to generate. The main.dart file, basic, my app has a material app, returns the, home, uh, the demo page. And then the demo page, of course, which is pretty much just an app bar that says spider and a center that says spider, text widget that says spider within the center as well. So that's all we have. Now let's go ahead and start the process of generating some of these assets. First thing that we need to do is obviously we have to install this command line tool and you can install it either via Flutter or you can do Homebrew. I'm gonna use Homebrew because I had some issues when I added it as a Flutter package. It didn't allow me to use Spider University on the system, uh, but with Homebrew, I'm able to do that. So we're gonna use Homebrew. So we're gonna go to our terminal within our project, uh, type brew tap B-I-R-J-U-V-A-C-H, oops, C-H-H-A-N-I slash Spider. All right, and then brew install Spider. Let that fetch that, all right. And if the install was successful, then you should be able to type in Spider in your command line and you should see this information about it. It says Spider, a command line tool for generating Dart asset references. So we're good to go there. Now we can go ahead and actually generate some of these assets. So first we need to add these assets to the directory. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an assets folder and I have some images already made. Well, not made, but I got from Unsplash that I'm going to add to our assets directory. It's just five images of the five biggest cities in America. We have Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, New York, and Phoenix. So those are the images that we'll be working with today. Back in the pubspec.yaml, we also need to add a reference to these assets uh, oops, by specifying the path of where they are located, which is assets slash images. Now we can go ahead and create the spider.yaml file, which is the configuration file that lets Spider know how we want to generate these assets run the command spider create and if we go back to our directory we go if we scroll down we see spider.yaml it's a bunch of different things in here um a lot of different properties we don't really need to focus on all of these but just know that you have some options when you're dealing with this but if we scroll towards the bottom this is what we want to focus on we have a package named resources which means it's going to create these assets in a folder called resources the groups are pretty much what group are we going to be uh putting all these assets assets in so we're going to be looking at the path assets slash images. The, the name of the class where these assets will remain is called images. And then the file types are PNG, JPEG, JPEG, dot WebP, dot WebM, dot BMP. Okay. So with that said, we could continue to work with spider.yaml, but you can also do something a little bit easier by adding it directly to your pubspec.yaml file. So let's go ahead and delete the spider.yaml and we're gonna run that same command again, but add a modifier to it that says dash dash add dash in dash pubspec. Now, if we go to our pubspec.yaml, which we're already in, you can see that same spider.yaml file is now located in our pubspec.yaml file, which in my opinion makes it a little bit easier because it's only one YAML file that you have to worry about now. And you can also just scroll up to see, all right, which paths are now being specified in the assets uh, of the pubspec.yaml, okay? 
So we got that in there. Now, if we go ahead and run the command spider create, I'm not spider create, uh, spider build, and we come over to our directory in our lib folder, you'll see that we have that resources packages created and it created this images class for us with all those references to those assets. So you see how we all, we named them, the name of the files were Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, New York, Phoenix. It automatically knew to name these variables by their asset name. Pretty easy, pretty convenient. Now you can also, um, well, let me also explain the resources.dart is just giving a reference to those images.dart class. That way you're not importing images.dart whenever you need to um, call on these variables because I'll show you later, but we're gonna have several different classes that we can have in this resources.dart. So whenever you need to call on any asset, you'll essentially be just calling resources.dart. And it also created some tests for us to run if uh, if we decide to do so. So this is pretty much saying, do these uh, images exist, okay? Now you can do spider.build each time, or if you wanted to instead maybe create a listener for it, you can add a watch to it. So let me close some of this out and we're going to see here. Um, we're going to the same command, but it'll be spider build dash dash watch. Okay. So now we're listening for changes on that assets directory. So if we go to assets and let me open up images.dart. Now, if I delete Chicago, you'll see that Chicago automatically got removed from the images.dart file. Now I'm not hundred percent sure why you would mess with the assets folder while developing, but I'm sure that there's a reason because it's in here. So uh, just know that that's out there as an option. So I'm gonna go ahead and add Chicago back in there and you see Chicago got put right back into the images directory. The images have been generated. Let's go ahead and modify this uh, spider.yaml essentially. Let me go ahead and take this other one out. I can delete that since we're using the one in the pubspec.yaml. So back down to this configuration, I'm gonna change the name from resources to my images. And then I'm gonna add a prefix called image to these same assets. So now every asset that we generate that's in this group is gonna be prefixed with IMG. Pretty helpful if you know. Later on, I'm gonna show you how you may have a bunch of assets and it may not be specific to just say you have Chicago or you have Houston. Like what is Houston? Is that the sound? Is that an image? Is that a document? You're not sure. So you can uh, prefix it with IMG or whatever you choose. So now uh, let's see here. I'm going to delete this images.test as well as these resources and no longer watching. So now we're just going to run spider build again. And now we go back to the lib directory, you see we have my images, and then within here, the images.dart, all of those variables now have the prefix IMG. So now you know when you're calling on Chicago, it's an image, uh, image Houston, so on and so on. Technically, you would know what it is. Well, right now you would know what it is because it's in an images class, but I'll show you in a little bit how you can combine different assets together in one general class, so the prefix might come in handy in that scenario. The images have been generated. So now I'm going to actually display some of these assets or the images in the app because it wouldn't be a trade codes video if I didn't touch any flutter, right? So let me go ahead and close this out just for a second. Oh, and something also to keep in mind, make sure that the indentation for the assets is correct. Uh, a few seconds ago, I had it a little bit shifted to the left, so that wasn't gonna work. So I shifted it to the right, make sure that it's aligned properly under this flutter up param right here, and everything should work fine, okay? So I'm gonna close this out. Now on this demo page, I'm going to replace this center with a padding widget. Specify the padding to be edge insets all. I'll give it a padding of 16. Uh, let's see here. Then the child will be a size box because we wanna specify how big the image can actually be. So we'll give it a height of 200 and a width of double dot infinity, just meaning that it can go as wide as possible. And then the child is going to be an image, asset image, and this is where we actually call that images uh, class. And we'll specify the first image as Chicago, all right? Uh, so we got Chicago displaying in the app. Um, I want that to look slightly different. So I need to specify the fit, box fit, to be box fit dot fill. All right, 
So that's how you would call the images to display in the Flutter app. And if we switch this out, let's say IMG Houston, we now have Houston displayed in our Flutter app. Now let's say you want to generate assets from more than just images. You might want to generate for some audio, right? That's simple, no problem there. Uh, I have some pre-made audio that I'm gonna add to this project. So I'm going to come down to audio and I'm gonna drop this into the assets directory. And these sounds are just audio uh, sound bites from another game I was working on. I was trying to remake uh, Mario in Flame. So these are some familiar sounds if you've ever played Mario. The brake block sound, bumping a brick, Mario jumping, pausing the menu, and of course the infamous power up sound. Okay, so we're gonna be generating assets for all these sounds. So same thing that we did uh, for the images, we need to update this path to now also look out for a directory called audio. And then down here, we are going to pretty much, we're creating an assets class that's going to contain all the images and all the sounds. So it's still one group, but let me go ahead and change this package now to say something more generic like my assets. And we're going to have two paths that we're looking for now. So we'll add an S here, drop this down the line and specify it like this. I think one more indent would work actually. And this will be the one for audio. And we'll prefix it with asset now and change the class name to assets. And we also need to add a new type because those are WAV files. So we want to make sure that we specify that in the types for him. Okay. So that looks good. Uh, let's see here. Is everything in there? I think everything's in there. All right. Let me go ahead and delete this images, all references to that images class. Um, and right now our Flutter project will probably have some errors because it's still looking for that images class, but don't worry, we'll replace that in a second. So now if we run spider build and we go back to our lib directory, we now have a package called my assets. And within assets, we now have all of the images and sounds within this assets directory. So we have asset Chicago all the way down to asset power up appears. So I'm going to replace this with assets dot need to import that and then add assets. Let's just do Houston. Okay. Uh, and get rid of the images directory. Okay. So that is how we can create both the, or pretty much create whatever asset we want all within one class. So just like we did with the images displaying them in flutter, I'm going to now play some of the audio in flutter. So I'm going to modify this widget a little bit more. I'm going to put this image in a column instead. Let's see here, because we're gonna have the button that plays the audio right below it. Gesture detector on tap. All right, this is no longer a const. And then the child is a circular avatar, whoops, circle avatar, child icons dot play arrow. Okay. Whoops. All right, so within the on tap, I'll create an asset audio player, uh, new player dot open, and we're gonna pass in an audio object, and now we'll just call that assets class, and we'll play asset jump small. Okay, and I love doing this in Flutter. They call these things tear offs. I believe that's the right name for it, but uh, we can actually just use this. Oh, not tear offs. This is I think it's a lambda function. Don't quote me on this. Uh, I lose sense of the jargon sometimes, but essentially we can just call this method directly like this. So now let me go ahead and refresh this just to make sure everything's clean. But if I hit the play button, we got the, the sound for Mario jumping. Now let's say that we want to, instead of having all of the assets in one assets class, which I personally wouldn't prefer for the reason I stated earlier, but we want to instead have a asset class for the images and an asset class for the sounds. We can do that simply by modifying this groups to have two paths now. So in here, we're gonna change these back to single paths, a single path for each group, because we're only gonna be listening for images on this one. And we'll let this prefix be IMG again, call this images, and we'll take off that dot wave because we don't need that. And this one will be listening for the audio and make sure we put these back on the same line. This prefix will be sound and we'll call this uh, sounds. And we only need the dot wave for this one. 
Now let's build this again, spider build. All right, that worked. Now if we come over here, you'll see, uh, let me delete that assets.test because we're not using assets anymore. And delete, delete assets.dart, yep, okay. So you can see now we have this images directory with all of the images. And then we have this sound directory with all the sounds. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to replace these with the respective directories that should be called. So images, we'll put Los Angeles in here and we'll call sounds pause. All right, refresh this. All right, we got Los Angeles. And if we hit the play button, we got the sound of the pause menu. All right, almost wrapping up here. The other thing I want to touch on before we sign off is this use references list. Now this says generates a variable that contains a list of all asset values. By default, it's set to false, but we're going to set it to true and it's going to give us an array. Pretty much what it says is going to give us an array of all those variables. That way we can access them kind of in an iter iterative, iterative fashion that way we can loop over them or use them for whatever you want it's an array you know however you want to use it but let's go ahead and build this again spider build all right and if we come to images.dart you see we have a values array and it put all those variables in this array for us so you know typically if you want to access chicago you have to specify that one specifically but let's say for instance we want to loop over them like a use them for a list view builder or display them in a row. Why don't we do just that right now? All right. Uh, back in the demo page, I'll take this out uh, and we'll come down here and we're going to replace this padding widget with an expanded widget because we're going to put a list view builder in here and the list view builder, it, we're going to have some items under the list view builder and we don't want it to cover what's under it. So we'll put it in an expanded widget. List view builder, uh, item builder, context index, and it's just going to return that same padding widget that we created. Okay, right now it is looping over. I'm not sure how many would it display. Oh, it's infinite. Inf infinite. Okay, we're going to fix that by specifying the item count to be images dot values dot length. All right, so now we only have five, which we should, but we need to specify the image that's going to be displayed. So we'll do images.values at index. All right, let's see. Oh, and this is no longer a constant now. All right, so we have our five cities now displayed in a list view, Chicago, Houston, LA, New York, Phoenix. We're gonna do the same thing with the audio, but we're gonna put this in a row. So we'll take this gesture detector in a row of children oops and loop over that for int i equals zero i is less than sounds dot value dot length i plus plus all right sounds values okay and so now hmm, i feel like i did something wrong here let's see for int i oh i gotta put the gesture detector in there there we go. All right, we got our five buttons over here. That looks very crammed, so let me change that. Let me beautify that a little bit. Main axis alignment space evenly. All right, much better. Now, if we hit play, uh, wait, we still have only the sound pause being specified. We'll fix that right now by saying sounds value at index i. So now when we hit each button, we should hear each of our sounds that are in our assets directory. working just how it needs to. So that's essentially how you can use the spider command line tool to generate references to assets that are in your assets folder. As always, if this video was helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if this video was beneficial for you. Until next time, this is Trey Coles signing off.